Joined by head coach Marty Favard of the Hampton Sydney College Tigers football team. They were picked number one in this year's preseason poll. Coach, last year you made an outstanding run in the NCAA tournament, getting a home game, winning that home game against Maryville, and then going out west to the then number two team in the country in Linfield College, leading them at the leading them at the half, but unfortunately losing the game at the end. Tell me a little bit about though what that experience meant for you, but all and also for the players when you come into the season. Well, JJ, I mean you've been around long enough. I mean it's been six or seven years since an ODAC team won a playoff game, and for me personally, you know. I guess even going back to the Catholic years, you know, never gotten over the hump. So, you know, beating Maryville, a very good team at home, was uh, kind of got the monkey off our back. And then, you know, flying out to Oregon on Thanksgiving Day, playing the number two ranked team in the country, um, you, you had no idea. You know, we could have gone out there and lost by 50. Uh, they were really good, but we played a terrific first half. Uh, had a legitimate chance to win, and, and I think it certainly galvanizes our kind of expectations and spirits knowing that we could play with the big boys. Uh, hey, they turned around the next week and had a three-touchdown lead on Whitewater. So, you know, so all that kind of, I think, bode well for our conference and certainly our program and a uh, good learning experience for our, our returning guys. And then let's talk about the guys coming into this season. Pretty much give me a state of the, of the union, state of the Tigers coming into this preseason. Well, it's interesting. We are... Um, we're the defending champs, but I think there's a sense of hunger with our, our seniors in particular. And, uh, you know, it's documented. We've got a lot of good kids back. And uh, a really, really strong junior-senior class. I got 30 seniors, which is unheard of for us. So our expectations are high. You know, you get a little taste of it. And, you, and if you react the right way, you're, you're hungry to get back. Heck, our guys want to play Linfield again. So, um, you know, it's good. It's an exciting time for us, and uh, obviously our expectations are really high. Quarterback is a hot position this year in the league. Cause in, the, in past years, we've been pretty stable at quarterback over the years. We've been able to roll people in. This year, we've got three or four teams that need to replace either a graduated quarterback or somebody changing a system around. You don't have that problem. You've got Nash Nance back this year, who was responsible for 44 touchdowns last year. He threw for 27, ran for another 17. What do you see out of him this year coming into a senior season? Well, we think he's the best quarterback in the country. Um, he has improved himself physically. Uh, he's gone, went down to Florida and worked out with some Division One guys. Uh, he's doing all the right things. He's probably one of the fastest kids on our team right now at 218 pounds. So he looks like an SEC quarterback. And you know, obviously his his journey from Tennessee to Hampton Sydney has has been talked about a lot. But uh, you know, when I've had quarterbacks third third year starting, we've been real special on offense. Going back to J.D. Ricca, Corey Sedler. And now he gets his third year, and you know we're going to give him the keys to the car and let him drive it, um, and it's going to be fun. You got a stable full of receivers back from the throw to, led by Holton Walker, 111 receptions last year, over 1,600 yards, and I believe 16 touchdowns. Those those are numbers that were at the national level in every every one of those categories. What do you see from him this year? But also with the other guys you've got back, guys like uh, like Michael May coming out there, or your or your tight end Joey Drewhan from last year. Well, I mean. You know, Holden be a good fantasy pick, but uh, I, I think teams are going to clearly uh, focus on him a little bit more and make sure that he doesn't kind of go wild. Um, so we, we, we expect May to, to step up. He had a real good spring and a good summer. Uh, and then we have, we, like you said, Joey Drewhan is a guy that is a sleeper, might be one of the better tight ends we've ever had, and we like to throw to our tight ends. And then we got some slot receivers that are proven, uh, you know, guys like uh, Joey Kiernan, He's played a lot of football for us. Fuller Clark, who's a local kid, uh, they're all seniors. They've all, you know, waited their turn, and uh, we're going to have some toys. And looking forward to it. The one thing that's <laughs> left up to a little bit of question that it hasn't been in the past years is your offensive line. I believe you got one starter coming back from last year, but you're going to have to fill in for, with some guys that have probably been in the program. But now it's their time to have some game experience. What do you see from the old line this year? Well, you lose Will Farrell, guy started 45 games for us. I mean, that's just uh, it's going to be really difficult to replace him. But we got good players. They just haven't had a chance to play. And uh, it was like our defensive line last year was a big question mark. And, you know, we ended up getting two guys that were first team all league. So uh, we got eight or nine. We're going to throw them out there. We're going to have a physical camp. They're going to go against some good people uh, with our defense. And, uh, and then obviously the big test with Wabash in the opener where, you know, I think they had the top defense in the country last year. So uh, we'll know by September 6th who's ready to play. 
Take a look at the defensive side of the ball that you let into there. You have to replace last year's defensive player of the year in Tyler Eichwald, but you've got a lot of guys back. Josh Doggett in that linebacking core is, looks like he's ready to step into that role. Scott Marklin anchoring the, the defensive line, and then several guys back in that secondary, John Morris, Reed Rowley. Talk a little bit about what you see out of your defense this year. Well, that, this senior class, when we brought this, these guys in, we thought it was the best defensive class we ever recruited. And so now, four years later, you know, you got Johnny Moore, you got Dog. Uh, you got uh, some cornerbacks. You know, Sid Henry I think is going to be a terrific player for us. So we're really excited. Marklin was a pleasant surprise last year. He looks better now. Freddie Potter's filled in. So we got um, we got a lot of guys that have played a lot of football. We got a lot of speed. Uh, I think we can blitz more because we'll be able to play some man. So you know, as you know, our defense flew under the radar last year, but they were the top ranked defense in the conference, and there was a reason we won it. And you know, certainly looking at that making game, it really came down to that unit making, making plays at the end to, to, to win the championship for us. So, yeah, we're, we're loaded on that side of the ball. I'm just kidding with Wes Dotson. I said, you know, don't screw it up. We've got some good players, and uh, it should be fun. When we take a look at a view of the conference, you know, I've been talking with some of the other coaches about what you've done, what you did last year, what your squad did last year, and how maybe that elevates the league. And we take a look at it. You had your run in the national tournament, but when you look at it from a conference perspective, everybody played with you guys. There's an odd blowout here or there, but in the league overall, everybody's beating each other up. Games that, that you win against some people, you lost to Shenandoah, and that Shenandoah team lost to some other teams that you defeated pretty handily. What does that mean for the league coming through here, both internally from a competitive nature, maybe from a national perspective? Is it gaining a little bit of, uh, a little bit of ground on the rest of the nation? Well, you would think so. Um, and it's a cliche to say that, you know, you know, our league's competitive and balanced, but it is. You know, I, someone was mentioned the other day, I mean, Maryville might have been the best team we saw, you know, through week 11, and, and Emory and Henry beat them. And Emory was toward the bottom of our conference. So, you know, it really is, uh, I think you've got to take care of home base. Um, and you know what? There's good coaches in this league. I mean, I think that kind of flies under the radar, too. I mean, these guys aren't easy to prepare for. They, they motivate. They, they obviously uh, work their tails off. And so, you know, it's a grind. And I think it helped us in the tournament to, to, to have to play Macon on the road and, and, and be in that atmosphere. Uh, that was a lot more difficult than going out to, to Oregon. I mean, that was, a, that was pressure. So uh, it's a good conference. It's gotten better and better and better. And, uh, you know, you could see any one of four or five teams winning it this year. Coach, I want to thank you for joining us today. Good luck this season. Thanks, JJ. Appreciate it.